The big question is, can I prove this? This I consider to be a very serious Rosetta Stone. This is Young Men magazine. The article is titled, The G Engines Are Coming. By far the most potent source of energy is gravity. Using it as power, future aircraft will attain the speed of light. Now, in this article, they give you the names, they give you the time frame, they give you the dates, they give you the defense contractors, universities, and research centers that are actively pursuing cracking the gravity barrier. They talk about the Lear Corporation, the Sperry Rand Corporation, the Bell Aircraft Corporation, all trying desperately to crack the gravity barrier. And it's clear from the eyewitness testimony, they've done it. And then we have Michael Schratt to thank for this, a great archivist and historian. And he's found these are journals that date from the 50s, one you know, 1956, where the big buzz in the aerospace industry was anti-gravity, quote unquote, the G engines, gravity engines. And this was actually in the open literature until they figured out how it really works and it all went black. Now, where did they get the technology? This was an interesting crash retrieval. This is prior to Roswell. This is November 1946. This was seen by a courier who went to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and he had a guard, an MP who he was friends with. And this guard said, you know what? I got something I want to show you. So he brought him into this facility at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and there was this craft sitting there. And this little red dot that I have here shows you the attempted point of entry. They were using a diamond tip drill bit to try to get into this craft. So the question is, if this is one of ours, why would they be trying to get into this? So is this the beginning origin point of a reverse engineering program? You know, some of the UFO crash retrieval material, we've looked at it and we found that the materials used are very strange. When extraterrestrial material is recovered through military crash retrievals and its metallic structure is examined under a microscope, the metal is so pure that we could not replicate it, even in a vacuum in space. This is because extraterrestrial crafts are not manufactured on a Ford assembly line the way humans would manufacture something. Everything in the material universe has a frequency and a corresponding sound vibration that creates and sustains its being. Extraterrestrials manufacture objects by first creating a resonant frequency. For instance, the frequency of a flying saucer. This is a sort of vibrational blueprint that interacts with the substrate of the physical universe, pulling into existence from other dimensions atoms and molecules that then organize and condense into the structure of the object being created. In this way, extraterrestrial material is literally manifested into being, like trans-dimensional 3D printing or Star Trek's replicator technology. Moving on to 1963, this is a Marine. He was called from Cherry Point, North Carolina to an undisclosed location, and his job was to guard something there. And when he got to this facility, they opened up these doors, and he saw, propped up on scaffolding, this 40-foot diameter dish-shaped craft that looked like a fat hamburger. It was about 15 feet tall. He noticed that there was a white circle painted on the floor, and his job was to shoot to kill anyone who would try to breach that circle. They were trying three ways to get into this craft. Number one was a diamond tip drill bit. So we've got two cases of this now. Number two was an acetylene torch. That failed. And then the final attempt was bringing in two 18-wheeler tractor-trailer low-boy trucks that had these very high-voltage generating devices, and they were using a laser to get into this craft. In a previously unreleased interview with aerospace designer Brad Sorensen, Sorensen describes a secret air show that took place at Norton Air Force Base on November 12th of 1988 a classified military exhibit in which so-called alien reproduction vehicles were unveiled. 
The craft were hovering off the floor with no landing gear underneath and nothing supporting it from above. When asked, where did they get these concepts from, Sorensen states, they said they copied it. By the way, these went all through the solar system, the components, Mercury era, 1959 to 1960s, early 60s. So these were operational. When did we master gravity control where these were being functionally built by classified projects here on Earth, not extraterrestrial? October 1954. So here we are riding on the surface of the roads and cars belching out garbage and pollution. When I say a lost century, it really is. They were already working on these programs as early as 1948. And during the Clinton administration, they were spending $100 million a day on black budget programs. The big question is, has this been integrated into the aerospace industry? And if we look at what the witnesses are reporting, they're reporting similar things across time, across dates, locations. Now this is March 23rd, 1966. This is Temple, Oklahoma. Primary eyewitness name is Eddie Laxon. He was an electrical engineer. He was working at Shepard Air Force Base. So he's commuting to work. It's about 5.06 in the morning. And I want to stress that this is not my case. This is an actual United States Air Force Project Blue Book case, and it can be verified through Project Blue Book. So he's going to work in the morning, and all of a sudden, something is blocking the road in front of him. And he notices something that looks all the world like a tipped over bowling pin. It's about 75 feet across. On the starboard side of the craft that you see here, there was an air stair cutout door and a man. I want to stress this was a man. This is not an alien. He was wearing two piece green military fatigues. He had a baseball cap with the bill turned up and he was shining a flashlight near the bottom of the steps. Above this air stair door, there was an interesting stinger or spire that tapered back and swept back to the end of the vehicle. And at the end of this spire, there was about an eight inch diameter sphere. And that's interesting because I keep getting reports from the eyewitnesses of spheres and balls and protrusions and prongs sticking out of these UFOs. And if you look at what the eyewitnesses are describing to us, and you look and examine high voltage electrical equipment, it's a match. I believe I can make a case that the components that people are seeing on these UFOs are off the shelf, high voltage electrical components. When this gentleman, who was this military green fatigue gentleman, when he noticed that he was being watched by Eddie Laxon, he scurried up this ladder, he slammed this door shut, and then there was a high pitched drilling noise this craft levitated off the ground and then took off like a spark on a grinding wheel and made no sonic boom whatsoever. This is back in 1966. Rockets are obsolete. Solid rockets are obsolete. Jets are obsolete.